This program lineup is brought to you by Vision Express. KUAM TV first on Guam. KUAM News Headlines are presented by Calvo's Insurance, protecting Micronesia for 85 years. Matson and the Adahi Itano program. Apply at matson.com. Cars Plus, Guam's automotive leader in sustainability and electric vehicles. Learn more at carsplusguam.com. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it. And King's Restaurant, serving your local breakfast, lunch, and dinner favorites for over 45 years. Ahead on KUAM News Primetime. A former police officer learns his fate and gets 20 years in federal prison for drug smuggling. I'm Julian Hernandez with a story coming up. Federal authorities continue to investigate cyber threats made to the NMI hospital. I'm Tomas Maglonia with the full story and what the hospital wants patients to know. And the finalists have been announced. The next round of educators are celebrated ahead of finding out who will be the next teacher of the year. Half a day and good evening. Welcome to KUAM News Primetime. I'm Nick Delgado. And I'm Destiny Cruz. Thank you so much for making us a part of your day. Well, Des, an ex-law enforcement officer who admitted to his role in a scheme to smuggle drugs to Guam showed remorse for his crime. Jose Pablo Ananich learning his fate in the District Court of Guam. Julian Hernandez joins us in studio with the latest. Federal prosecutors threw the book at the former Guam police officer. Jose Pablo Ananich, who also served a few years as a correctional officer more than two decades ago, will now have to spend quite some time locked up in a federal prison. Ananich getting 20 years. He was sentenced before senior judge John Connor in the District Court of Guam. Ananich admitted to illegal drugs and weapons possession charges nearly three years ago. He pleaded guilty to multiple counts of conspiracy to distribute 50 or more grams of methamphetamine, attempted possession of meth with intent to distribute, and carrying of firearms in commission of a drug trafficking crime. The case, which involved eight pounds of meth, also led to the conviction of James Mothness and Andrew Manabusin. Both are currently serving time in federal prison. Now the case all surfaced after investigators learned Mothness smoked meth with Ananich and was recruited by him to figure out how to get money to someone in California. Ananich gave Mothness the money to buy 51 U.S. postal money orders and address them to the supplier identified as Manabusin. The money orders totaling $51,000. Manabusin was busted in California after mailing a package to Guam containing more than 3,600 gross grams of meth. During a controlled operation in June 2021, the package was delivered to a home in Jigo, which was opened by Ananich. When law enforcement arrived, Ananich was spotted inside a shipping container converted into a storage and workroom, apparently burning the package. After learning his fate, Ananich walked out of the courtroom today with a brief apology. I don't have enough life for me to regret what I've done. I'd like to say sorry to the people of Guam who trusted me. Ananich will have to self-surrender to federal authorities at a later date, or he will then begin serving his 20-year prison term. Julian Hernandez, KUAM News. Thanks, Jules. Well, an ice dealer is sentenced to spend more than half a decade in federal prison. Jacob Vance Manabusen, also known as Caddy, was sentenced to 70 months before senior judge John Connor in the District Court of Guam today. He pleaded guilty to conspiracy to contribute five grams or more of meth methamphetamine hydrochloride. As KUM reported, the investigation dates back to November of 2020 when a confidential source working with the feds told them about Manabusen's drug business and that he was selling out of a hotel in Tumon. The source continuously met with Manabusen and his then partner, Annalyn Tenorio, to buy the drugs. Tenorio has since taken a plea to admit it to her part in the case. A convicted drug dealer is now facing federal charges. Michael Rizal Jr. indicted on charges of being a felon in possession of a firearm and ammunition. The indictment was handed down in the District Court of Guam today. Court documents state the case is connected to his 2020 drug case that he was convicted of in Superior Court. As KUAM reported, Rosal led Guam police on a chase back in 2020 when officers found 9 grams of meth and a pistol in his possession. A federal indictment is handed down against a convicted felon accused of possession of a firearm. Anthony Benaventi-Timonglo is charged with being a felon in possession of a firearm and ammunition. 
The indictment was filed in District Court of Guam today. As reported, Time and Glow was charged separately in the District Court last year after being accused of stealing copper wire from federal property in 2019. Prison records show he has multiple theft-related cases against him dating back to 2013. Another defendant in a multi-million dollar inheritance scheme will now serve less than one year in federal prison. Gide Ambimbola was sentenced to 10 months before senior judge John Connor in District Court of Guam. Ambimbola learned his fate after he pleaded guilty to conspiracy to commit wire fraud. The case involved more than $2.3 million. Over 50 Guam residents fell victim to the advance fee scheme. Defense attorney Jay Ariola. Mr. Abimbola is satisfied with his sentence. He's very remorseful. We apologize to the people of Guam for anybody he's hurt. Ariola adds Abimbola has already paid back about half of his restitution to the victims and was the only defendant who testified against the others involved in the scheme. He also says his client is responsible for putting a stop to it. Abimbola declined comment after the hearing. His co-defendants have since admitted to their roles in the scam. As reported, the group scammed island residents by falsely representing they would need to pay certain taxes and fees in advance before receiving funds for the inheritance. The victims were promised large amounts of money for paying the fee, but they never got anything in return. The Superior Court granted a defendant's request to disqualify a prosecutor in a prison contraband case, the case involving Teresa Blas, who was charged twice with promoting major prison contraband. The motion, which was approved by Superior Court Judge Maria Senz on Tuesday, was to disqualify Assistant Attorney General Joseph McDonald from the May 2023 case due to conflict. According to court documents, it states the, that McDonald should not be serving as both a special prosecutor in the case and a criminal defense attorney in other cases. As we reported, co-defendant Victoria Aguilito was heard over the prison's pay telephone system talking to a prisoner about the alleged scheme to smuggle in the drugs, tobacco, a glass pipe, and vape pens into the local prison. The pair allegedly planned to conceal the contraband in a mustard container. The case also invo involved now former Department of Corrections officer Travis Venus, who was fired from the job after admitting to his part in the alleged smuggling. A federal investigation into cyber threats to the Northern Marianas only hospital made in early March continues. Regional correspondent Smas Mangolini reports on the measures the healthcare system is taking to protect patients and staff. Federal authorities continue to investigate cyber threats made to the NMI hospital. Patient safety is our priority. Uh, we want to make sure that that their the records are protected, and we are doing everything. We're doing a lot, really. Um, I, I don't want to list them down, um, but um, you know we we take whatever it costs to protect the records. Believe me, we've spent that cost. The NMI's only hospital started receiving threats through email and WhatsApp regarding alleged unauthorized data transfers in early March. Hospital Director of Information Technology Bell Busby directly received those cyber threats. They did not respond as the federal investigation is ongoing. The first thing we got to do is make sure that our, our, you know, patient files are secure. And, um, you know, one of the biggest priorities, of course, is patient safety, right? Um, we want to make sure that patients who come in, that the, the provider um, and the nurse and basically everybody in the hospital who, who needs to access your health records to treat you, um, you know, has a, is able to access your records. So that's the, the, the priority that we basically placed ourselves in. They said the hospital has taken every security measure to prevent further threats and protect old data. They admit it's not a new issue for industries across the globe and it likely won't be the last threat. Because you can't see it, you can't touch it, you don't know. You don't know what they're doing. It's sometimes uh, for the ransomware, it's usually it takes a long time to happen. You know, there's a hole, they got in, they go around your house, they see what they can take. It will take months and years, so you don't know. You don't know if they're gonna be, you're going to be hacked. You don't know if it's a ransomware. You don't know if they're just taking data from you. They offer this advice to protect your data. To all the community, all you, they can do is be vigilant. Don't click on anything that you, know, that you don't know about, that you're not aware about. Um, don't engage on anything, especially if they're asking you for your information. Mm -hmm. Do not be so lenient and putting your, your information on the internet, on the social media. 
Tomas Manglonia, KUAM News, Saipan. Governor Lu Liang Guerrero wrote to President Joe Biden today, the National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan as well, and Deputy Secretary of State Dr. Kurt Campbell, requesting that the Philippines be included in the Guam CNMI Visa Waiver Program. The governor is asking for the issue to be placed on the agenda of the April 11th Trilateral Leaders Summit of the Philippines, Japan and the U.S. as it relates to security and economic cooperation. She noted that the latest census indicates that Filipinos make up 29.1 percent of Guam's population. The issue was also discussed in a recent meeting with CNMI lawmakers. The governor wrote, quote, removing the visa requirement for Filipinos who wish to travel to Guam and the CNMI would stimulate tourism, considering the spending of Philippines. Filipino travelers exceeds that of individuals of Guam's primary markets, which would bolster our economic recovery efforts after the, after the decline in tourism due to the COVID-19 pandemic and Typhoon Mawar. She adds that the Guam Army National Guard could also have closer ties with the Filipino Armed Forces. The governor noting that her administration is willing to support the supervision of the pilot program if needed to ensure its success. And a quick note, just before coming on the air desk, Governor Lulian Guerrero, word out of Adeloupe, signed multiple bills uh, into law today. She vetoed one, but that is Bill 213, which is relative to the duties of the public auditor. We'll have the full details of what she did sign into law on KUAM.com. Time for a quick break. Keep it here. You're watching KUAM, your leader in local news. Did you know KUAM is helping you stay up to date on your local news? Take it away! And catch up on your favorites. Hey, there we go. All on Peacock. Watch award-winning movies. This is your moment. And the trendiest shows. Did you miss me? Welcome to the Kelly Clarkson Show. Whether you're on the go or unwinding at home. Until next time. Sign up now to stream on Peacock. that goes with your flow. Get unlimited local talk, text, and data at the most affordable rate with unlimited flow postpaid. Rooted in the community since 1995, Kmart is here to serve you 24 hours a day. From essentials to fill your pantry to delightful treats, our selection of groceries have everything you need to stock your kitchen with love. Step directly into style with the latest fashion finds in shoes and clothing for the family at unbeatable prices. Turn your living space into a dream home with our unparalleled selection of home goods. Illuminate your shopping experience and brighten your budget every week with our blue light specials. These specials are a testament to our commitment to offering the biggest variety for the best value. Discover a world where quality and savings meets convenience. Kmart is your one-stop shop where every visit is an adventure. Shop smart and save big at Kmart, your Guam shopping destination. Welcome back to Prime Time. In a proud tradition, KUEM joined others in honoring our devoted and selfless public school educators at the Car Plus showroom in Mighty today. It was an exciting day as we find out who the distinguished finalists are for the 2025 Guam Teacher of the Year. Six educators with the Guam Department of Education are one step closer in the quest for the title of the 2025 Guam Teacher of the Year. Today, GDOE and the Foundation for Public Education announcing the impressive group of finalists made up of elementary through high school teachers, shaping the next generation of scientists, authors, musicians, and leaders. GDOE Superintendent Dr. Kenneth Swanson giving well-deserved praise to these unsung heroes. Well, it's really important to me that, that we take the opportunity opportunity to show the community and remind them of all the great stuff that's going on. We, we have our challenges here on Guam, but we have some amazing teachers and, and school leaders that are doing a, a wonderful job every day, and we need to give them recognition. Now Guam DOE teachers Trina Valencia, Madrid Borja, James Santiago, Sharon Cabrera, Marie Carino, and Yo Kyung Shin will move on to the final stage of the selection process, the classroom observation at their respective schools. 
2023 Guam Teacher of the Year, Stephanie Conception, sharing her experience with the finalists ahead of their journey. When I was named Guam Teacher of the Year in 2023, I questioned why me, when there's thousands of amazing teachers like you guys here on our island, and as I've gone through the process, I finally realized that it wasn't about me being Teacher of the Year. It's about representing all the wonderful teachers, amazing, hard work, dedicating teachers of our island of Guam at the national level. The finalists with the highest composite scores from the application, interview, and observation process will be named the 2025 Guam Teacher of the Year by judges who are also former Teachers of the Year. The winner will be announced on May 3rd and will finalist. represent Guam in the 2025 National Teacher of the Year program. With Law Week right around the corner in May, this time of year, there's an opportunity to acknowledge some people around town who selflessly fight for your government to operate and serve in an efficient way. Jason Salas explains how you can nominate such a person for a very cherished honor. The Justicia Award was created to recognize members of our island community who advocate for an efficient local justice system and good government. It's one of the opportunities that we have during the year where we can actually recognize someone, um, an organization or an individual for contributing to the rule of law, for recognizing and helping strengthen our judicial system. Um, and so it's really something that we take to heart. We've been doing this since 2008. But recipients don't have to be an individual or a high ranking member of Gov Guam or even in the public sector at all. So anyone can submit a nomination um, for an individual who has supported civic organizations um, and building up again, like I said, the rule of law and the administration of justice. Someone who has really contributed um, as a civic um, organization or even an individual. Uh, and so any person, you know, my mom could submit a, a, a nomination. Um, you know, anyone really can submit it. It's just a 250 word kind of essay or statement about this individual or this organization. The honor has a long list of distinguished past recipients. Um, but really it's more meaningful, I think, if someone who's outside of the organization can look at folks who have contributed um, and, you know, give their 250 word little statement about uh, why they think that uh, that person really does deserve uh, the recognition that, you know, a lot of these folks really don't get throughout the year. Now you've got until Friday afternoon to submit your nominations. So let's give credit to those citizens who believe in streamlined public resources. Well, if you were traveling in the Hagatnya Wednesday morning, chances are you probably saw a big Pacific blue marlin being towed to the Guam Museum. Well, the replica of the world record fish, which has been on display at the Guam International Airport, will temporarily make its home at the Guam Museum. It's all part of the new exhibit that is slated to open on Friday, April 5th, with the reception at 6 p.m. Imane Guihan Families That Fish is an exhibit put together by the museum and the Western Pacific Regional Fishery Management Council. According to Guam Island Coordinator Felix Regis, the marlin, which was caught by Greg Perez on August 21st, 1969, put Guam into the spotlight with the world record of 1,152 pound catch. Wow. wow. Perez, along with his children, are featured in the exhibit as making significant impacts in the sport of fishing on Guam. Members of the Perez family greeting the marlin at the museum. The exhibit opens April 5th and will run through June 14th at the Guam Museum from Tuesday to Friday at 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Man, I remember growing up as a kid and seeing that marlin on display at the yeah. old Guam airport. Wow. Uh, but when I saw it, when I heard about it going on the road, I wonder how yeah. many people said one fish, two fish, red fish. <laughs> Blue fish. There you go. <laughs> the Marriage Council of Guam wants to work with the Guam Visitors Bureau to put on the parade during the 80th Liberation Day celebration. GVB already announced a special rate with United Airlines for people traveling to the island for the festivities on July 21st. Now, during a meeting today, mayors shared that they still need more candidates to run for Liberation Queen, maybe Destiny Cruz here. Ooh. So far, <laughs> only PD Santa Rita and Manila have submitted applicants. Mayor's Council President Jesse Alec encouraged all villages to have representation. I'm really encouraging everyone else to have a candidate. Um, I'm trying. I'm doing okay. trying. Dedido's trying. Barragada's trying. Okay. Be between the ages of 18 to 25 to participate. Oh, I missed the cutoff. Anyone interested can check with your village mayor's office. And now for your world at home. 
Here's a view of the waves of Inalong. Your hometown. Biba. Troy Palamalu Safety, a.k.a. The Quiet Storm. Troy's seen more out of the corners of his cold steel eyes than most mortal men have seen straight on. The last thing an offense would witness? A fury of flowing mane incoming at high speed. Hey! Cat-like quickness and supernatural instincts like Troy's only come once in a lifetime. And oh, how grateful we are that they came in ours. No one made the beloved burg of Pittsburgh feel quite as safe as this safety. The Hyundai Tucson with advanced safety and tech because even safeties could use a little more safety themselves. At Not Howie says Taco Bell only really hits after midnight, which is why I'm gonna use the Cantina chicken menu to help him see the Taco Bell light. Mm, very juicy. <laughs> Hi, the uh, food hits, right? Are you at Not Howie? Does it hit or does it not hit? I'd say it hits. Yeah, it does hit. I can't lie. Okay, but you did, maybe. The Cantina Chicken Crispy Taco isn't just for late night.
afraid, keep the smile on your face. The moments you can't replay, and I'll be around. Wherever life takes you, we're always here for you. Calvo's Insurance. Count on us for life. Our new McDonald's Spicy Chicken McNuggets are just the right amount of spicy. A small to medium Sprite kind of spicy. Uh, let's get a McFlurry after this kind of spicy. But if you get the mighty hot sauce, it's a napkins up for foreheads now kind of spicy. Uh, this came from McDonald's kind of spicy? Because our spicy chicken McNuggets, breaded in tempura and made with cayenne, are just the right amount of spicy. Unless you remember what I said about the sauce. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. We start with her and her local business. We start with them celebrating 30 years. We start with Big. Welcome to Dusit Honey. How are you sushi today? Keep doing your best. Congratulations. Small and growing businesses. We start with global connections and make them local. At GTA, we start with your business. The Tax Man Cometh, so that means the Guam Women's Chamber of Commerce, our friends over there, some um, truly amazing female members of our community, want to get you ready. If you are a last minute tax filer, we've got some tips for you and make sure to check out the Women's Business Center on the 5th, 9 to 1030 in the morning. They have information, they have inspiration, they have everything you need to know to get your taxes in on time. Shout out to the Guam Women's Chamber. Make sure to check them out at Guam Women's Chamber on Instagram, IG if you're one of the cool kids. All right, get ready to lace up your shoes because definitely all the cool kids are going to be at Koku Weekend. Kids and adults, the youth, the Guam Koku Kids Fun Run is on Saturday. Sunday is the Guam Koku Road Race. And remember, on Sunday afternoon, that's when they have the big after party. That's for everybody. It is an entire weekend of fun. Make sure to check us out on YouTube because I did an extensive interview about what is waiting for you at Koku Weekend and how you can register and take place. And April, you may not know, is Sexual Assault Awareness Month and happening up in the CNMI is an event you need to take advantage of. At the Hopwood Middle School field, there is a family fun day with kids' activities, games, and much more in the CNMI. That is News Bites for today. Well, the Cocoa Road Race already just, what, less than 10 days away I saw I there? I know. Are you going to run? <laughs> probably be there for the post-race breakfast, if anything. Me too. <laughs> Well, speaking of eating something yummy, now to your birthday shout-outs. Which you can submit on the Coldstone Crew Mary Birthday Club on KUAM.com. Okay, guys, today's birthday recipient has the limelight all to himself, and deservedly so because he's one of our cast members, one of our family members here at KUAM, the one and only victorious Falan. This dude is constant energy. He loves Guam. He's a vital member of our community, and you know what? He's one of one. Vic, today is your birthday. We celebrate you, bro. We hope you had a fantastic day at the office, and we hope you celebrate with family and friends. We really, really appreciate you, Vic, and we hope you got love from the world and all the energy coming back to you because today is your birthday. Awesome. Victorious Falan, birthday today on the 3rd of April. Happy birthday, Vicky. Happy birthday. <laughs> That's your primetime show. Thanks for watching. I'm Nick Delgado. And I'm Destiny Cruz. Have a great evening and stay beautiful. Ali, Mogithin, Hafidei Zantiro, Rananim, Kasselelie, Lengwo, and Yakwe. Welcome back to another episode of the One Micronesia Show. This one was such an honorable one because I got the chance to sit down with none other than His Excellency Surangal Wiff Jr., the President of the Republic of Palau, to talk about the struggles that Palau went through since October of last year until recently when President Biden signed all three compacts of free association for the Republic of Palau, Federal States of Micronesia, and the Republic of the Marshall Islands. Here's that talk. Gentlemen, if you're if you're watching right now, I'm I'm literally it's an honor to to sit down with the, the one and the only, the honorable uh president of uh Palau, uh, Surangal Whips uh, Jr. Uh Mr. President, thank you so much for allowing us to to having us sit down and, and to chit chat with you about the issue at hand. Well, uh, first of all, you know, I I always uh, value uh the time spent with media. I think it's important uh, first of all. 
uh, to hold us as leaders accountable, but also uh, the opportunity to uh, better inform um, our friends around the world about the challenges we have in Micronesia and in Palau and, and how we can work together to promote peace and prosperity for all. So uh, really, I thank you for the opportunity to uh, be able to come on your show and uh, uh, share a little bit about our challenges. I know you wanted to talk about um, the compact. Yes. And uh, last year in January, uh, Palau signed the MOU. And in May, we were the first to sign and conclude our agreement. We all the, we did all of this because it was important for us uh, to have everything done so that we would be part of the uh, uh, appropriation or the budget bill for 2024. Uh, that was supposed to be implemented in, in, on October 1st. Unfortunately, uh, things don't usually happen as we plan, and the Congress has now gone into continuing resolutions, which I guess for RMI and, and FSM, you, you, have, you have money that you continue to get under the continuing, whereas uh, Palau, we're in a little more of a difficult situation because the way our compacts are structured, the money goes down to zero. So uh, we're uh, challenged because we were expecting that money to come come through. And uh, uh, when we when we uh, met in Washington uh, as specific leaders, uh, we were hopeful <laughs> hopeful that something might happen. But uh, of course, uh, October came and went. Uh, we've been continuing to try to do all we can to inform Washington of how important it is. To get this funding passed because even at the levels that FSM and RMI are getting, it's not near the levels that they're expecting. And of course, all our people are expecting uh, to get these funds to, you know, take care of health, education, public safety. You know, I was sharing earlier, we have short 36 officers. We need to hire another 40 teachers. These are things that are all being held because we have the lack of uh, funds. And, and, and important infrastructure that needs to be built. So uh, it's really critical. But more importantly, uh, with one of the things I've shared is this is really uh, about the strong partnership that our countries have. Uh, I think one of the things that the uh, freely associated states understand is, is the challenges we have for security in the region. Uh, you know, I share this with media. Uh, we, we believe in a free and open Indo-Pacific. We, we believe in a, a rules-based uh, uh, world order. And, and we've had, the, you know, research vessels from China, four of them during my administration, that have come in doing research in our waters, uninvited, uh, and, and claiming that they're sheltering from a storm or whatever. But why do you have uh, research equipment in the water? You know, so those are those are real challenges that we face on a daily basis. We also believe that uh, the only way to really achieve uh, peace is through strength, mm -hmm. and, and that's the partnership that we have with the United States to help ensure a free and open Indo-Pacific. But at the same time, because of our location, like Yap and Palau, mm -hmm. I mean we're the we're the westernmost islands in in, in the Pacific, and, and so we're. Uh, at the tip of the spear. And our strategic importance is, is important to the security of the United States. And with that, of course, uh, we say, well, as partners, these compacts are important uh, that we help each other. Very critical. And we've seen it that we've had these compacts for years on years. Uh, and then now just seeing it kind of come to a little, um, a little pause, I think, and it's affecting. And like you said, you did talk about, you know, uh, some of the issues at hand there in the the beautiful island of Palau. We have short of teachers and officers. So, and, you know, I really hope that, you know, with this and the message that, that you put out through the letters, uh, the one with the, the collaborative effort letter with you and the, the, the other two presidents and the, the specific one that you wrote, uh, I hope that, you know, that hope it pushes the, the, the message out there and to help uh, you know, bring a, 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 everything into conclusion and the approval of, of all three compacts to our nations. I guess the positive, po positive messages we, we get back from Washington is that both sides, Republicans and Democrats, support this. We wrote letters to senators individually also. And I think the result of that is 24 of them tried 
to get legislation back on the supplemental. The good news is that I think it's Congressman McCall, Foreign Affairs Chair in the House, has now made a statement that he's going to get these compacts on the supplemental. He's going to put them on the NDAA. He's going to get it done. Uh, you know, I tell our people that we have to have faith in the system. Sometimes the democracy is not as um, uh, pretty. Uh, dem democratic forms of government are the best uh, because they're open and they're transparent. And debate uh, uh, sometimes takes a little longer than just saying, go do it. So um, my next, my next, and kind of like well, towards the final uh, question here is, what, what's a message uh, to the people of Palau who are living um, abroad, especially here in Guam, out there in, in the United States, who might have be questioning like what is what, what's happening with the agreements, what's going to happen with them and their livelihood? What message would you have for the people of Palau living abroad? Well, I, I think uh, nothing really changes for the Palauans living abroad uh, as far as. Uh, they're not going to get kicked out of the United States. This is only the economic assistance package, <laughs> right, that we're talking about here. Um, I think what we've seen over the years is uh, them ensuring that they get those important federal services like Medicaid, mm -hmm. um, uh, student loans, uh, those all uh, continue. Uh, I guess for Palau, our compact is... Um, we have these review periods, but they're basically, it's up until the end, it's 2044, mm -hmm. uh, or 2043 20, 20, now is the new, new term. Well, I guess in, in closing, uh, in closing, I just want to ask, you know, like, and you, you know, you, you did um, write that uh, collaborative um, letter with the other, the, the two nations here. And so, you know, I guess just to close out on how important is, is this compact to all three nations? It, it's, it's providing critical services that improve the lives of the people on the islands. And you know, one of the things that um, I, I impressed upon Washington when I was doing during my many visits there is under our, uh, the compact, half of our population has left since 1994. They did a study uh, up until 2020 and it was basically half had left. We need to be able to provide uh, an economic base that Palauans uh, don't need to move to America mm -hmm. to uh, look for the land of opportunity or look for the American dream. Mm -hmm. We should be able to create that dream in Palau. That's good for security. That's good for uh, uh, making sure that uh, the people that grew up here take care and, and, and live and prosper in these islands that we've been blessed with along with our partners. Uh, many of them have uh, joined the military. Uh, one of the things that we're hoping that maybe something that can happen in the future is have a reserves set up in Palau. Uh, also, uh, the opportunity to just bring them back and retire here and, and contribute to the building of our nation. I mean, our nations. All right. Well, that's that's all the questions I have for, for you, uh, Mr. President. Um, in closing, any closing remarks before we uh, wrap things up here? Well, no, just thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to share. Uh, as uh, Micronesians, we need to uh, stick together. Uh, we are stronger together. Uh, you know, I, th I think one of the examples of that was when we banded together to make a statement to PIF. Mm -hmm. And we said... Uh, we're not going to be part of this organization if they're not going to respect us. And I think we've gotten back together. It's all Pacific Island countries, and we are stronger together. So uh, it's a pleasure to work with uh, uh, our fellow presidents from Micronesia and, and pushing our issues, whether it's climate change or compacts or whatever, forward, because uh, we, need to, we need to stick together. And, and because of our small populations and we're dispersed, sometimes we're not heard. So we got to stand up for each other. Definitely A1 Micronesia, that's for sure. That's right. Sulang and Kamrad, President Surangal Whips Jr. for the talk. Thank you so much. Guys, we're going to take a break. 
We're back with more of the One Micronesia Show. Guam's auto appearance specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's auto appearance specialist, over 20 years of experience. At Not Howie says Taco Bell only really hits after midnight, which is why I'm going to use the Cantina chicken menu to help him see the Taco Bell light. It hits. Hi. <laughs> Are you at Not Howie? The uh, food hits, right? The Cantina chicken crispy taco isn't just for late night. The Cantina chicken quesadilla isn't just for late night because it has a perfect slow roasted chicken to melted cheese ratio. That's chicken on the inside, cheese everywhere else. Introducing the new Cantina chicken quesadilla only at Taco Bell. You're back. And we're back. The One Mike Kinesia Show continues. Now this one, recently, the UOG Center for Island Sustainability in partnership with the Sea Grants, Guam Green Growth, recently inducted new cohorts into their new program. And these students were from uh, the FSM, Palau, and CNMI. So let's go check out the ceremony and get to know these new cohorts. The University of Guam Center for Island Sustainability and Sea Grant, in collaboration with Guam Green Growth, launched the second cohort of its region-focused G3 Local 2030 Island Network Conservation Corps. The event was held back in February 19 at the OG Residence Hall. The G3 Local 2030 Islands Network Conservation Corps is specifically designed to equip university dorm residents from the Federal States of Micronesia, Republic of Palau, Republic of the Marshall Islands, and the Commonwealth of Northern Marianas with skills and knowledge necessary for emerging green economy while addressing pressing environmental concerns in the region. Current member Magim Reb from Palau, who is majoring in civil engineering, explains why he decided to take part in the Corps. And I joined the G3 cohorts uh to help my island with the uh, new ideas that I learned from this program. And from the past semester, from what I learned was like um, civil engagement with planting trees, community service, uh, and the unity with the community and everybody that gets together to keep the island uh, clean and working for a sustainable future. Um, one of the things that um, I found very interesting was um, how to have soil control uh, due to the erosion from rain. Uh, we plant trees to hold the sediments down. At the same time, these trees help uh, the native plants grow. And that's something I want to bring back to my home. Mareb, in fact, has an idea of where in Palau he wants to use what he's learned from the program. Uh, down in Honto, which is more towards the north side, and we have like dead lands over there. So that's something where I want to address. And for this semester, we're going to be looking into like um, uh, recycle and use these um, materials as uh, repurp repurposing these materials. So that's something I want to learn to and bring back home. Don David, who is from Pompeii, is majoring in tropical agriculture, says he turned to this program in 2023. So I can uh, learn a lot of what they uh, can teach us so we can uh, bring it back home. Uh, but based on my experience from this program, we really work on uh, invasive species and working with the community and helping the community for what uh, challenges they have in, here on Guam and also if we can apply to bring it back home. Core members will receive practical training across very sustainability themes. Focus areas will include agriculture, aquaculture, island beautification, invasive species mitigation, reforestation, circular economy practices, ocean conservation, and harnessing renewable energy. Additionally, they will participate in activities that promote civic engagement and leadership. Representing Saipan is business administration major, Arya. The experiences that I have, um, you know, been doing for the past, like last semester, was basically like trying to, you know, make a difference here in our uh, dorms. And, you know, we just currently built a, a nursery or a garden for growing plants. And hopefully that once we grow enough, uh, like fruits or vegetables, it's free for residents that are living here in the dorms. So they're free to take it. None other than that, we get to experience off campus, which is planting trees and also um, being, you know, certified with others like CPR and, and other things that we did was, it was really great. Her biggest takeaway, 
So what I would like to, you know, take away is like, you know, the gain, uh, the experiences and the knowledge that I have gained from this program. So like um, basically um, trying to like conserve water and, you know, it's important that we w I would like to bring that back to Saipan, you know, because we have like issues with the waters in, in Saipan and, you know, no one would like uh, to drink or shower with salt water so I was thinking of trying to um, you know conserve with the rainwater make it useful trying to build like a water catchment system that can be really useful and hopefully that things that I made here I could actually bring back to my own home island. Dr. Austin Shelton director of EOG Center for Island Sustainability and Sea Grant stated this program is not just about one-way learning as you embark on this journey, you will impair your unique island perspectives from your homes, enriching our community with diverse insights. Shelton also underscored the crucial role of the G3 Local 2030 Islands Network Conservation Corps in advancing the broader movements towards achieving the 17 United Nations Sustainable Development Goals in Guam and the region. And so by having this conservation corps, the Guam Green Growth Local 2030 Islands Network Conservation Corps, we're bringing back these practices, this knowledge, and sharing it with our community to remind all of us that we were sustainable islands and we will be again, and we can face any of the global challenges that are coming towards us. These impacts of climate change that are right here at our front doors, we don't have to sit back and just let it happen. We will be resilient, we will overcome them, and we will do that together um, throughout your cohort and all of the lessons that we share between our islands together. So congratulations on getting into the program, and let's make a big difference and make a big impact this semester. The U.S. Department of State via the NOAA National Sea Grant College Program provided federal funding to establish the G3 Local 2030 Islands Network Conservation Corps. Congratulations to the new members of the second cohort. Good luck and thank you guys for all that you are doing now for a better Micronesia. Wow, what an amazing opportunity to meet these young individuals who are so excited for what's to come in this program and representing their islands at the same time. Guys, we're going to take a break. We're back with more of the One Micronesia Show. Honey, do you want some milk? Do you ever wonder how your favorite products make their way into your local stores? Most arrive on state-of-the-art mats and vessels that transport containers of food, household items, equipment, and supplies into the islands every week. Because we know that you depend on us, we work closely with our partners to ensure that our shipments arrive on time, all the time, so you can find your favorite products when you need them. We transport the region's most precious cargo that supports successful businesses and promotes a better quality of life for our families. Matson is proud to have been the hometown shipping carrier for Guam, the CNMI, and Micronesia for the past 25 years. And you can count on us to be here for generations to come. Only Pizza Hut lets you surround your favorite pizza with greatness. The one and only stuffed crust pizza tempts your taste buds with melted cheese stuffed inside that amazing crust. And at just $18.99 with one topping, the stuffed crust pizza is truly irresistible. So grab your slice of pizza perfection with cheesy goodness baked right into the crust. The stuffed crust pizza, just $18.99 with one topping. Only at Pizza Hut, the island's best. Biba Mess tomorrow. What a month of celebration of cultural heritage here on Guam. And what a way to do it than at the Valley of the Laddie. So you ready? Let's go. So for today's workshop, um, we started off with riding the boat, going, um, starting to go up the river. We stopped at what we call Laddie Dock, the uh, village site. 
We got down. We were welcomed by uh, my coworker Kanai. Um, we also did a little bit of an eco tour and introduction to, um, to open up a coconut. Husking it and then grating it as well. Everybody took turns um, grating the coconut. And then um, after that, all that hard work was done, we finished the eco tour. We started walking over um, to start our workshop. Just from the coconut in here and also a little bit of water. And then all the meat that we grated. So you just gather it, you bunch it up together, and you just squeeze. And after we squeezed the coconut milk, we did not waste the dry coconut. We took that and we made coconut candy. Added a little sugar. Let that caramelize. And then we throw in the coconut. And that's how you make coconut candy. After the coconut oil and coconut candy making workshop, we joined in with the bigger group and we got to see a live action fire making show. So today I'm going to show you guys how to make fire. We're going to be using the hibiscus. It's a wild And after that, we continued on our journey down the road. We got to see the many live animals there. Talk about goats, the pigs, the deer. And to cap it all off, we ended it with a carabao ride. What a way to experience Mesh Chamorro down at the Valley of the Laddie. Guys, don't forget to go check out their website, their Instagram, to find out where workshops are at this month of Mesh Chamorro. A big thank you to the crew there at the Valley of the Laddie for an amazing hospitality, amazing show, and amazing good time. Thank you guys so much. Sujuros Maasi and Kamrad. Thank you so much to Dave Taikinko and the team down there at the Valley of the Laddie. Such an amazing workshop to, to make coconut oil and to make coconut candy. And there's more workshops in stores for you guys. All you have to do is go check them out on the IG, their website, to find out what workshop is there each and every weekend here in the month of Mesh Tomorrow. Be my Mesh Tomorrow. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back of the One Micronesia Show. Brian Dawkins. Safety, a.k.a. Weapon X. Brian laughs at audibles. Laughs. For there is nothing he does not anticipate. He is never caught off guard because his guard is always up. His skills of perception are honed like talons. Brian sees all. He knows all. Dominates all. His defensive prowess is feared the world over. The all-electric Hyundai Ionic 5 with advanced safety and tech. Because even safeties could use a little more safety themselves. Search for your Hyundai Ionic 5 today. For the world's greatest athletes, there is nothing like competing on the world's biggest stage. And when that stage is here, anything is possible. How about that? An Olympics unlike any other. The Paris Olympics. 
one of my Kinesia show and we're back for the last and the most entertaining one because we are here with the one mic jam session this one i'm so excited because sister tanel from tonga recently was in palau had a great time in palau and did a big concert and for them in palau it's been a very long time since a big artist had visited so that was very iconic for the people of palau and what she did as well is she shot a music video and you know what i'm just gonna stop talking and let you guys enjoy this music video check it What? 